There is now 16 yards of concrete in Sir Anthony's pool. Miss Sandy. When I got off the bus, I didn't know what was going on until you started singing. I was so excited. You made even me even happier when I got into the backyard and there was a cake, cupcakes, cookies, and pinata. I can't thank everyone enough for what happened yesterday. Thank you, Caitlin. It's going to be a whole shipwreck. So I'm looking for pirate stuff. Anything that we can make up to look like pirate ship stuff. So there's an artist of the non-conventional variety who lives in a town near us that Al met years ago when he was driving down the road and saw a wagon for sale. Well, he stopped in, he saw Alex Detard, he bought the wagon from him and that has started a lifelong friendship between Al and Alex. Alex has developed his backyard into an amazing, reclaimed, eclectic village. It is super fun and so intriguing to walk through and that really comes into play when we're doing some of these themes because subtle elements can make such a big difference on the pool projects. That would be a good idea for a yes. couple of the cannons. Yes, yes. And we'll have water coming out of those. Yeah. Man, you, uh, you're you telling me creative. How about you guys? Yeah, but you do it. Yeah. I We try. Yeah. Is my head okay? There's a lot of little stuff that could be used in here. So here I am collecting pirate booty in one hand, but then in the other hand, this is exactly the types of things I'm looking for. That lens in this housing is perfect to do a little vignette. Take the insides out, put some characters in there, put some light in there, put the lens back on. So when someone's just peeking, walking around looking, it'll be another surprise for them to see. How much for this one? Thank you. Forty dollars. Give me thirty. How about fifty? That is no. not how negotiation. Give me thirty. I want thirty. I, I don't have a. I don't have change. Take forty. Well, I, I take twenty. No, take forty. No, no. I want to take twenty. Let, let's walk over here. You're a bad negotiator. All right. Well, thank you. I'll be back. Keep okay, right. the good work, you guys. You got it. The pattern, how we tie the steel, is based on the strength that we're looking to get. So the tighter the pattern, the more strength uh, that we're, we're gonna achieve in terms of the, the shell itself. And there's a, there's a balance between too much steel and not enough steel. And that balance really is, if we tied this so tight that we had two inch by two inch squares, the difficulty with shooting concrete is you would have shadow marks, you'd have lines behind here where the concrete is not touching the steel, which is then negating that compressive and tensile strength. Yeah, well, well, we'll shoot this, we'll shoot it square. You know what maybe we'll do? Maybe we'll start by shooting this. This would give like, everybody something to work on. Start shooting, shoot this, then come over because we have so much fill that has to get done underneath, everyone's gonna be standing around. I think that's the plan. Morning, Sir Anthony. This is Sandy's daughter. Hi, I'm Kaylee. I am Sandy's daughter here working at the pool company. My favorite thing to do is actually the concrete, which we get to experience today. Well, as I just got to the job, I was told that our air compressor broke. I've either got to see if I can go find a, get, find a compressor. Do you know what's going on with it? Yes. I, I have to go and get a compressor to get through the uh, belt on that. The belt actually broke on it, so Al has to go find a new air compressor before concrete gets here today. So now we're just waiting around, doing other things until we can get some cement. Um, I hope everything goes okay. 
I feel like every time something has to happen with the pump or something where we have to make do and make something work. So hopefully it will all go smoothly. Working here long enough, there's always a way. So I'm sure it's going to turn out just fine. What you taste? Hi, <laughs> baby. <laughs> I know. You want to come in, don't you? You want to come in? Oh. 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 here! Now that I'm eating my salad, truck's here. <laughs> Uh, well, our air compressor, the first one broke, so then Al had to go rent a new one. And then the second one, concrete got here and it decided not to work again. So we had to fuss with it to try to get it to start again. Thankfully we got it and everything went smooth sailing from there. And then of course you got things happen like suddenly I became the button boy and I had to hold this dial right where it needed to be so the concrete shot perfectly. Otherwise I would have screwed up either way. We're actually doing shotcrete today, which is we'll get the mud from the truck, it goes into the hopper, and then we'll have an air compressor. And they're both hooked up so Al can turn on the air and it will actually shoot the concrete, getting it to form better so we can form the sun shelf. Yum. So we have like the bench part of the sun shelf and then we got the walls and if we were to do regular concrete it would just keep falling. So since we're able to shoot it, it is more sticky and it will let us form the wall of the ah. sun shelf. Concrete days are always eventful for us. It's not fun while you're doing it, but it's a whole heck of a lot of fun when you're done and you see you've done it pretty good. That's the fun part, when all the aches and pains and frustrations and challenges make it all worthwhile. Currently, we have 26 yards of concrete in the pool structure. What was your favorite part about today? Um, the end. <laughs> the end. That's Karen's. Probably being able to try to level out the sun shelf and work with the concrete is my favorite. Today, we did the first of two shoots to get the base structure done. So tomorrow, we'll do another shoot uh, in there. That'll get the base of the waterfall at least the underwater, underground part complete. And we were driving home, me, Jesse, and Kaylee, and I felt my car jerk, and I thought, that was strange, but you never know. So then we drove a little bit further, and then it went, tick, tick, tick. it was like three jerks in a row, and I'm thinking, okay, that's a little bit more thought-provoking. We got out, and sure enough, it stalled. And I thought, okay, Al, I can't make Taco Bell. I'm pulling in into the Waterford Plaza. And right as I turned into the Waterford Plaza, it just, the whole thing died. Then Al came behind us. So Al, Bill, and Rick, they sat in the front. And then me, Kaylee, Jesse, Katie, and Loki, all the girls were in this crowded back seat. So it was like, okay, let's go home. <laughs>
life. Yep. What we're going to do is we're going to continue uh, with the collar around the side of the back side of the pool there, and then we're actually going to shoot the uh, do the first step in shooting the base of the pirate ship, as well as the love seat on the far side there. So more than anything else, it's kind of like a foundation pour. So all the concrete in there is pretty much laying the foundation for for all the uh, artistic work that comes. Today I am this morning trying to beat the concrete truck, putting up True Track, which is what our because of the steel wall, we can't put a normal thin set on, so um, we glue tile to this track. You uh, keep the pool. You keep the liner or the pool water water protected. I'm sorry, I'm tired. <laughs> okay. And the concrete truck is here, so I gotta hurry up and screw some more. Okay, so we are at the end of our second shot crate day and we took care of the step in the sun shelf. We finished our pool collar and then we finished the base of our waterfall and our cute little love seat. So, so far so good and we're slowly moving along and getting this project done. Just a lot of uh, labor intensive work today and so we're all tired. Have a good one. And just our concrete work here, we're at about 36 yards of cement, just in concrete supporting the exterior structures. And we're a long way away from being done with cement. He goes, when he came out, he goes, oh, are we going to talk about the elephant in the room? I said, what elephant? He goes, the elephant in the room. I said, do you have a problem? He goes, no. I said, then what do we need to talk about? He goes, we just don't talk anymore. It's really funny, because about the grotto. Yeah, we never talk anymore. Because we're just doing it and oh. don't say anything. Come on. Oh, okay. So That's yeah. the elephant in the room. Uh, oh, yeah. I talk about this? I said, I don't know what you're talking about, but this is the support for the waterfall right here. The elephant in the room. Okay, so per our original design and project plan, um, there was a key part of the design that actually wasn't on that. Uh, we briefly talked about it at the beginning of the project and said no, that wasn't necessary as far as on our end. And as the project has proceeded, there has been this element that has slowly developed that is just magically appearing. So yes, I asked Al the other day if he wanted to talk about the elephant in the room because he was in the middle of it tying rebar down. And he said, I have no idea what you're talking about. I don't talk about elephants. What are you talking about? And I said, I don't know, that little cozy room you're standing in that wasn't on the plan. And his response was, well, is it a problem? And I said, no. And he goes, well, let's not talk about it. We'll just see what it looks like when it's done. <laughs> so that's what we have going on. We are apparently getting a grotto in the waterfall that was initially not on the plans. And uh, we're excited to see how that pans out. Today we demold. We'll strip the boards off. Pull the two sections apart and be able to remove the knife and then you'll be able to see both halves of the mold. As you can see, there's the beginning of the knife. There's our knife. 
Then here's two halves of the mold. And these two go together, put those keyways and pinch them together. We now know that everything is lined up just right. And there's the end where we can pour our material into. I'm just using electrical tape and I'm gonna pull it as tight as I can get it and see if it's strong enough. This is the two-part smooth-on product as well. This is a liquid plastic resin. We've gotta be really careful that when we pour our resin down, we don't leave gaps right here, which is going to be interesting. Believe it or not, this will turn off white very quickly. Well, it didn't take very much, that is for sure. Our mold is full. This is another mold that I made for, we have a specialty wagon and it was missing one of these pieces. Here we go, see it? And what, it's a chemical reaction. And we're, we're literally turning a liquid into a solid in the matter of a few minutes here. There's heat coming off of that. You can feel it's really, really warm. Peel the molding back and you can see some of the see some of the coloring peel off there. See the casting of the knife. You can also see the overpour. So there's our knife. Now what we'll do is clean up our seams and our edges because as the two pieces come together, you get those little bits of seams and that's all that little junk that's kind of sticking off the ends. And we'll just clean that up with a knife, cut the end off, round it, and we will have an exact duplication of a knife. So that's the intent. We'll cast a whole bunch more of these and then we'll color them up. Two, one, 13, 14, 20, 30, hut, hut, hike. Okay. Oh, so I saw a little bit of some butt jiggle. Well, uh, I have no clue. I cannot. I, 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 I can't. I just can't um, confirm that for you or not. Cold. Two freaking rebar. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> 